You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we're looking at the offshoot from the NBA annual conference. We have two gentlemen with us uh, before that break. Uh, they're still with us. We have uh, Dayo Lomuagu, a public affairs analyst, and we also have Olu Mayowa Ido, a legal practitioner. I, I will stay with you now. I'll go to you now, uh, Mr. Lomuagu. Um, given an option to choose um, between the traditional form of hearing and that of uh, the virtual hearing, would you gladly tilt to virtual hearing or you would rather we stay with the traditional form, even if it's going to delay the cost of justice for you? Also, for me, I I'm not sure whether I'm a good representation of the Nigeria people, uh, but I think for me, uh, I have uh, possibility to the virtual a form of hearing, uh, uh, if that uh, is in the degree of justice at the end of the day. Because like I said, what is more important to me is uh, how do I minimize my time? How how do I optimize my time? Because I have some other things I want to do. I don't want to stay in court all day, all, all, all time. Uh, so if virtual uh, uh, hearing uh, uh, quickly delivers that to me, I think I'm, t I'm because, because of my knowledge of, uh, of, of uh, I mean, ICT and all of that, I mean, depending on my level, I think I will teach you that. If I'm sure that I don't have any, any disadvantage going for that. Uh, but clearly, like I said, uh, maybe that may not be the same for all Nigerians. Uh, but again, I mean, because of the several challenges that my, 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 my learning fellow has mentioned, uh, but clearly we cannot stay there forever. I mean, we need to adapt and change and get adaptation as we go on. But if you ask me as a person, I think I go to go, go for the virtual thing because I can say whatever I want to do and see, I think, how to kiss this and, uh, and uh, make whatever I want to do. Uh, so I go with that. All right, Mr. Ido, uh, what are the advantages? Uh, because some people believe the COVID-19 pandemic is a blessing in disguise to accelerate the development um, of technology. What are the advantages that you see for people um, in using this uh, virtual hearing? Um, I think the first advantage is just convenience. Um, it's convenient for everybody. So from the parties, the lawyers, the judges, you know, you, you can just sit at home and do what you have to do. Um, I think the, the other big advantage to me is the speed of um, the speed of justice. So I think, you know, since Buhari came into office, I think there's been a concerted push for, you know, judicial reform. I think this is one of those reforms that will accelerate the speed at which justice um, is dispensed because, you know, we have a situation where, as my friend said earlier on, we have a situation where you might be in court for four or five years without getting a solid resolution. And with the virtual hearings, I think, you know, it guarantees you that, you know, court will sit. Because one of the issues you have is you go to court on a Monday morning and you're told the judge is not around, or the judge comes in at 11 o'clock, and by the time he's two or three, he's packing his bags and he's going home. So um, I think, you know, in this type of situation, you know, if when court, when he says court is starting at nine, I think we can expect that court will start at nine. And, you know, this is, like, you make a good point when you say, you know, this could be a blessing in disguise. I think this is one of those instances where, changes that we needed to make for a long time, we have, um, there's a, there has to be the will to get them done right now because we, I don't think we'll have a better opportunity. The bottlenecks you would normally see with legis for legislating things like this, I don't think they'll be present now. So I think um, it's just about making those top decisions on finding ways to accelerate the pace at which justice goes. All right, I'm going to try and get your thoughts, if time will let us, on the suggestion for a 15-month um, uh, lifespan for all legal proceedings. But before we get to that, um, let me ask you um, the, about the shorthand system that is practiced by many judges. Do you think they will be ready to adjust to bring them to the digital age of not using that long hand system? Um, I think the first thing you have to realize with technology is that on a Zoom call, you can record what's going on. So there's no need for you to be 
writing, when you know you have stuff, you have um, you have audio recordings that you can refer to in your spare time. So I think I don't think that should be an issue. I don't think like that is a significant problem because I think again it's one of those things where the technology has made it easier for us. We just have to just use it. So um, I think it's just one of those things we have to kind of insist upon. But I think it does make things easier for people because if while writing, you miss something. You can just note, okay, 20 minutes in, I need to just go back and listen to what was said. And I can, you know, if I'm, when I'm writing my judgments, I can refer to it. All right. Uh, so I don't, conclude. I don't think it's a problem. All right. Let's conclude with um, Mr. Lomwagu. Um, there is uh, this feeling of distrust with the judicial system. Uh, this is a super own question. Uh, what do you think? would be some of the things that can be done to reinstate some level of trust in our judicial process. And as well as this uh, virtual um, uh, hearing going forward, what would be your recommendation for it to be realistic? I, I think clearly what, what we need to do, uh, uh, I look at it from the area from the angle of the manpower. Uh, so clearly you need uh, to, to bring people up to speed. Uh, in form of training, in form of, uh, if, I mean, where, where we have shortage of manpower, you need to bring more people in. I mean, clearly, because you want to, you want something to be done speedily. Uh, so uh, it means you need to, you need several people to man different things at the same time. Uh, and so, uh, depending on how many, how many lawyers or more judges we can get, uh, then um, what what capacity do they have? So if you need to show their capacity, if you need a training here and there. That we we will tailor towards what we want to achieve. I think clearly that that will support. So build the manpower, build the capacity in them. Then uh, you may also need to 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 to, to finance a few things. I mean, if you go to court, you see a, a lot of things crying for for for, for financial help. And so you, you need to also look at your infrastructure and all that to to support that. Uh, so that is in the area of uh, what you need to to get into 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 it. And uh, also, you see again. The, the we once it becomes a law, I mean, I know initially we may be struggling with it here and there, but once you put it in places, the right thing that needs to put in places, no matter training and all that, judges and lawyers won't have excuse. Uh, uh, so if you say you want justice to dispense in 15 days, in 15 months, or in 12 months, clearly, uh, I, I see people live up to that speed. Uh, you know, with everything that has to do with how do you go start for cases and all that, it's going to change and you see, the truth is, we can do better than we're doing. My question is, how are they doing it in other clients? In the US and the UK and in some other places, how are they doing it and they're getting it right? So once we begin to put in those clear things that we need to put on ground, uh, I think uh, Nigerian lawyers are back. Nigerian judges are, are, are some of the best in the world. And so to change, to adapt, I don't think it should really be a big deal. Yes, we have time to, 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 to do... I mean, little we have here and then practice here and there, get it right, get it wrong. But I think at the end of the day, it, it should be better for everybody. It's a All system right. that we should go for. Um, I think we have 30 seconds for you, uh, Mr. Idol, to speak quickly on the 15 year time frame, 15 months, I beg your pardon, time frame suggested by the president, uh, by the vice president uh, for uh, legal proceedings. Uh, I think 15 months is a bit. It's a bit. It's a bit of a stretch. Um, I think you need to because what you end up getting is you might have a lot of rush decisions because people are trying to. When you give them a timeline, they have to comply with. And I think because 15 months is not that long because the legal year really is about eight or nine months. Okay. So I do think we need to be more flexible. I'm not sure something that rigid will work. I think maybe we need to kind of expand it a bit, but also maybe kind of ensure that the bottlenecks that you usually get where a situation where a case is transferred from one court to another or is transferred from one judge to another, I think we need to kind of cut that out. So All right. um, maybe it should, 